Good evening. I'm Christine Devine. Thank you so much for being with us and sticking around. Welcome to Focus on Education, a Fox 11 News special. We're going to get right to it. That focus evident today in Florida. President Obama sharing a stage with former Florida Governor Jeb Bush. Yeah, a Republican. The two talking at an event called Winning the Future in Education. The president saying he's determined to help the nation's worst performing schools rebound. And it's time we came together, just like Jeb and I are doing today. Coming from different parties, but we come together not as Democrats or Republicans, as Americans to lift up all of our schools and to prepare students like you for a 21st century economy. Yeah. Meanwhile, here in Southern California, next Tuesday, four seats on the L.A. Board of Education are up for grabs. It is a critical time in the history of education across the nation. We here in California are dealing with budget woes, teacher layoffs, teacher evaluations, reform movements, what some are calling a failing system. Fox 11 is committed to covering education. Tonight we talk with three experts who spend their work days in the trenches working on behalf of the kids. Right now joining us is Dr. Randy Delling, principal at North Hollywood High School. Dr. Delling was a Vietnam era drill sergeant, called him Sarge, and a teacher at the junior high and high school level. Thanks for being with us tonight. Also joining us, Ben Austin. You've seen him here before on Fox 11, executive director of Parent Revolution. He's a member of the California, former member of the State Board of Education, and also served in the Clinton White House. Thanks again, Ben. Thank and our third guest, another familiar face. Hi there, Marshall Tuck, CEO of the Partnership for Los Angeles Schools, the Mayor's Initiative. He's also the former chief operating officer for Green Dot Charter Schools. All right, gentlemen, let's get right to it. I want to start with one question. Wednesday rolls around. We have a full school board now after the election. What is the one thing you want them to do right away? Dr. Delling, take it. Uh, to me, they need to start working on exactly how we're going to open the next school year with the budget cuts that are in place. Uh, certainly none of this is any of their fault. Uh, we have public policy makers that need to get to work and really make education a priority again in the state. And uh, in order for us to provide personalization in the trenches where I work every day, we're going to need more people and uh, we're looking at having less people. It's going to make it a real pressure cooker and a real tough uh, job. But uh, we're going to get there every day and do it for our students. That's what we have to do and we will do it. Yeah, we're all dealing with less, it seems. All right, Ben, what, what your thought on the what to do for the school board? Well, I, I, I think that we need to commit and the new board members need to commit to making every single decision as if it would literally affect their own children. And as, as motherhood and apple pie as a kid's first agenda sounds, uh, it's probably the most radical political agenda in the state of California. When we have 50% of our kids in the LAUSD dropping out and 90% of our kids not going to college. Give me a specific though. Uh, well, we need to commit to making grown-ups accountable to uh, student performance. We need to commit to putting money in the classroom, not in the bureaucracy. And we need to commit to giving parents the only people without a conflict of interest when it comes to kids, we need to get, commit to giving parents power over the education of their own children. All right, Marshall, your thoughts? Uh, two things, Christine. First and foremost, the board needs to focus on the June election. Uh, this, we need the taxes to pass in June. It's $200 million. Uh, we're talking about thousands of teachers' jobs. This city needs to step up, and this state needs to step up and sacrifice for our teachers, and most importantly, for our students. So the school board needs to start pushing hard for the June election right away. Secondly, we gotta look at school leadership. Uh, you do not have a great school unless you have a great principal, and the school district needs to get very focused on ensuring our toughest schools have the very best principals, and that we invest heavily uh, in making sure that we have a strong cadre of principals for the future. All right, we talked about the election next week. That's for the school board and some other measures. The election you're talking about in June, that deals with the governor's budget. Let's go over some of those numbers. The LAUSD right now is proposing a plan with an operating budget of $5 billion. That plan includes a $408 million shortfall, which could be less if voters pass that governor's budget proposal this summer. The shortfall also led to over 7,300 layoff notices being sent out, mostly to teachers. Now, I hear educators are moving forward with the worst case scenario, that they're not going to get this money in June. So, gentlemen, paint a picture for me of what to expect if we don't get this measure passed. Uh, and some don't want it to pass. So, so what is going to be ahead without this extra money? Uh, ben, start us out. 
Well, I, I think these cuts could be devastating. I agree with Marshall that we need to, we need to pass these tax increases in June, but we need to restore faith in our government. We need to restore faith uh, that, to parents across Los Angeles that this money is going to go into the classroom, not into the bureaucracy. We need to, to lay the groundwork for these tax increases uh, by uh, giving parents power over the education of their own children. Uh, th this is, th in, in some ways, these, these uh, elections are incredibly important, but in some ways, uh, these, these elections are inconsequential because parents all across Los Angeles are standing up and standing together and taking back education for their kids uh, through the new parent trigger law, which we're gives gonna, every parent the, the power to take back their schools. Right, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later in this half hour. Uh, Marshall, let's talk, though, about that money in that election. Let's say you don't get that. What do you do to move ahead? Christine, as you know, the partnership for Los Angeles schools, we serve 21 schools that were in the past performance schools. Today I was at Santee High School. Mm -hmm. Santee High School over the last two years has had, has had some of the greatest improvement um, of any school at the high school level in LA Unified. The principal tells me if we don't get more funding, he's got to make a decision in the next couple of months between is he going to keep one or two teachers or is he going to have to get rid of a online credit recovery program that helped 140 kids graduate last year. That's the kind of decision that these principals in these schools are dealing with right now. Teachers versus credit recovery. We cannot allow them to, to have to make these hard decisions. It's horrible for our students. Well, Dr. Dellen, you can answer this one because uh, I know Republicans are not for this, this governor's proposal and the tax increase actually rolls over some tax uh, incentives. Uh, so what, what, do you, what do you do to deal with the, the crisis in the budget? You have to have a can-do attitude. There's no doubt about that because in the end, you're going to have to work with what you get. Uh, we have a duty when the students show up, and they are going to show up, to serve them and to provide the best instructional program that we possibly can. Uh, we're hopeful that we can restore some of this funding uh, with this June ballot and that uh, the populace will make education a priority again and uh, realize that education is an investment. It's not an expense. And we need to invest in the futures of our children. And uh, sadly, we're not doing that properly right now. So we're looking at choices where I'm literally going to be the only security person on my school next year. And uh, uh, already, if a security call comes out at my school, you have a giant chance of me answering the call. And uh, it's, it's looking like it could be worse next year if these taxes aren't extended. Well, no doubt we're hearing that uh, from schools all across uh, Southern California and across the nation that are dealing with cuts indeed. And there's a whole debate as to whether you support this tax issue or not. Okay, uh, we want to get you involved, our viewers, in the conversation. With that in mind, we want to check in with Ed Laskus in the hot seat to tell you how to do that. Ed? Yeah, Christine, when you're talking money, you're talking teachers, and you're talking to your kids about the schools, everybody has an opinion. I know you do, too. So here it is, your chance. What do you think is the priority one problem with our schools, your main concern? Your lesson for the night, you text hot seat, then your concerns, your questions. Don't forget name and city, and then hit send. 71938, your text. Live with our guest, this Friday night, we're talking education straight away. I just want to say to you, shame on you. You rather spend dollars on attorneys over there instead of saving schools, instead of respecting the parents' signatures. Shame on you. Parents fired up. Last week, the Compton School Board rejected a petition prepared by parents at McKinley Elementary. The parents are trying to use California's brand new parent trigger law to turn their struggling school over to a charter operator. Board members said the petition failed to include required information. Pro petition parents were not happy. All right, welcome back. We're talking with Ben Austin, Marshall Tuck, and Dr. Randy Delling to talk about parent trigger right now. Ben, let's start with you because you were behind all this. What are we learning overall from this whole movement? Well, I, I, I think we're learning a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one, one thing that we're learning in, with how Compton Unified has reacted uh, is that education, uh, many of the education bureaucracies across the state, including Compton Unified, are designed to serve the interests of grown-ups rather than the interests of children. The average child at McKinley <laughs> Elementary is 50 times more likely to drop out than they are to go to college. Uh, Compton Unified did an audit on itself where it came to the conclusion, in its own words, 
that grown up, the interests of grown ups trump the interests of children and that the, the culture of Compton Unified is too dysfunctional to change. Compton Unified is, is, a, is, is a better proof point than we could ever make as to why parents need to take back power over the education of their own kids. So parent trigger is a new right for every parent in Compton, every parent in Los Angeles, and every parent in California to transform their schools simply through community organizing. Well, it, let me, I want to ask the principal what you think of this. Dr. Delling, uh, what would you think if somebody came to your school? You're not one of the poor performing schools, but if you were and you had this movement coming into your school, what do you think? Um, I, it, it, very strong feelings about this uh -huh. because the people I work with are good people. The educators that I work with are hardworking, intelligent, caring people who do everything they can every single day but to me, lift students let academic. Let me just say though, you are not one of the poorest performing schools right. in the state. And I understand that. I've heard I, I, and I've listened to that argument and I do understand that some schools really need to have a goose and, and I guess this is it. I'm, I'm not sure it's the panacea that some might think it is. Uh, you know, certainly if you need to change a school because it's chronic, chronic year after year, then something has to be done, but I don't think the educators inside those schools are really doing a poor job. I know they care, I know they're trying, and I'm not so sure that this is the answer and will result in uh, an increase in student performance. Marshall, you work with the mayor and his efforts to turn some poor performing schools around. Your thoughts on Parent Trigger? Uh, I think it's a great thing. Ultimately, we have to do what is necessary to improve every single school in this school district. And giving parents more power Getting parents more involved in this work is absolutely essential. One of the core strategies we use at the partnership is we've got to get parents to get involved in their schools so they can help their sons and daughters with homework at night, and so they also can come to the school and help participate, and most importantly, so they hold the schools accountable for long-term success. And giving parents more power in this equation is important. If you go to wealthier neighborhoods, you're going to find parents are demanding things and they're getting them. What the Parent Trigger says is in all neighborhoods, Parents can demand things, and they're going to demand the right thing for their kid, and let's change those schools if they don't make sense. All right, Dr. Delling, because you're on the fence on this, you, you want to give me a final thought on Parent Trigger? I, I don't really believe the idea that schools are set up for an adult agenda. I, it's just impossible for me to swallow. Um, but I do understand that some schools are struggling and need help, and we should be supportive and help them. Uh, I've listened to a lot of parents, from ur urban parents especially, who are in the middle of this and they're confused about what school do they have anymore. The school's all changed and we don't even know the school anymore and I, I'm just not sure that this is the way to go about it. I'm not totally against the idea of reforming a school that needs it. All right, Ben, give me 30 seconds, sum up what happens next with this uh, parent trigger in Compton. Well, well first of all, if, if I could say, uh, there, there are many uh, adults such as Dr. Dowling who are committed to, uh, to kids and, 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 and we need people like that in our schools. Uh, but there are schools that are systemically failing our children. We need to make decisions rooted in what's good for kids, not what's good for grown-ups. If you're 50 times more likely to drop out of school than you are to go to college, that's not good enough for my child. It shouldn't be good enough for anybody's child. And parents should have the right to take back their schools. All right. What comes next is uh, parents have uh, lawyers uh, who are suing because their constitutional right to a quality education uh, is being violated uh, and, and uh, we've already won a temporary restraining order against the entire school district of Compton Unified for okay. violating the constitutional rights of their children and we're going to win in court again. Tell you what, I've got to get to some other topics, so I want to move on. Clearly, parent trigger is an issue that people are talking about. The entire nation is watching what's happening here in California on that one. Sit tight. More to come as we continue our focus on education. We could talk a good hour on this next topic alone, teacher evaluations. Welcome back. We're talking with Ben Austin, Marshall Tuck, and Dr. Randy Delling. Uh, Marshall, start us out since you work, with the, you work within the LAUSD system. Teacher evaluations. I want to first start with we don't talk enough about the good things teachers are doing, and we don't talk enough about how we support teachers to be better. We don't talk enough about how we need principals to help teachers be better. So that's where the conversation's got to start. That being said, we certainly need to evaluate teachers. We certainly need to make sure that we're getting the best teachers in front of our students. 
At the partnership, we focus on supporting teachers, but then also making sure that they are delivering on what they're expected to do, which is improve the lives of students and educate those young people. And, and we got to look at a lot of different ways to do that, both in terms of the results of their students' performance, as well as in terms of uh, peer observations, surveys from students, teachers, parents, and others. Dr. Delling, you came to Fox 11 because you were angry about what you called teacher bashing. How do you evaluate teachers, though? And we've got to admit there are some bad teachers along with all the great ones. Yes, I find that the, what anybody would call a bad teacher is very few and far between and hard to find. Uh, I'm a big advocate of getting into classrooms. Uh, we need administrators in classrooms. We even need parents. We're trying to put together a parent visitation where we've taught them what the instructional strategies are that we use on the school site and actually get them in there and do an instructional strategy inventory. It's absolutely necessary that people are in there not only to watch what teachers do and help them get better and provide suggestions, but also that they're in there to support what teachers are doing. And like I said earlier, the vast majority of the people I've worked with and the teachers that I watch every day are hardworking, intelligent people who do everything they can every day to lift students' academic ability. And Ben, I'm going to let you take this last one here. Uh, perhaps you're the strongest voice of getting those bad teachers out. Your thoughts on teacher evaluation? Well, uh, you know, parents and teachers actually have a whole lot in common because you can't have a great school without great teachers. Uh, it, it's actually good for kids if teachers are paid a whole lot more money. It's good for kids if teachers are empowered and respected, not micromanaged by a bureaucrat who's never set foot in their classroom, never met their kids. But it's good for kids if teachers, as well as all other grown-ups, including parents, are held accountable for student performance. That's what all the fireworks are all about, but it's also important to recognize that we all have a whole lot in common when it comes to a kid's first agenda. All right, we're going to address some of the viewer concerns. We have questions coming in. So when Fox 11 returns on Focus on Education, we'll take those questions. All right, you see that chart right there? Welcome back to Fox 11's Focus on Education. It talked about parent involvement. People believe parents have to be involved. Absolutely. All right, we check with Ed Lasker to see what viewers have to say, Ed. Oh, lots of texts coming in tonight. Everybody talking education. Here's one that really mirrors a lot of texts we got in. Same point, big letters. Biggest problem are teacher unions who prioritize job protection over job performance. How to fix, please. Marshall, why don't you grab this one? What do you think? We need to remember that unions were created for a reason because there's a lot of bad things going on in teachers. They need to be rational. They need to come to the table and talk about the real issues, but it's not all the union's problem. We all need to get together and talk about serious, rational answers to the tough problems that face our kids. But uh, it seems like the unions take a lot of the hits. Here's one here again, several texts coming in like this, no name. We need Jesus and praying in the schools. Dr. Delling, uh, you, I'm sure you've heard this point of view before many times. Sure. Um, you know, that's fine. It's just not part of the curriculum. I think that I'm going to leave that one alone right there. All righty. How about another one? Ben, why don't we give you a shot at this one? Lori from Woodland Hills, the future of L.A. education is in charter schools and less money for a better education. What do you think? Uh, well, well, charter schools are a part of the solution, but uh, they can't be all or even most of the solution because they're not scalable. So good charter schools are good for kids, but we need to uh, learn what's working in charter schools and apply them to, uh, to district schools and uh, make public education about kids and not grown-ups, whether we're talking about charter schools or district schools. All right, here's one for, about for Dr. Delling from W. Uh, Wayford. Where did all the money go? When will education be about students and teachers again? If this budget doesn't pass, where do our children go for education? A lot of folks talking about this budget, the money, and lots of concerns, Doctor. Where did all the money go? Uh, I think it went to the banks. Mm. Uh, I'm not mm. sure. Uh, I know it's not coming to me anymore. Uh, I'm going to be nine teachers down next year for sure. Uh, we've already, if the worst case scenario comes on, where'd the money go? That's anybody's guess. I'm not sure. All right, another one. My concern is poor parenting. Parents are just trying to point the finger at the schools. They should take a look at themselves. A lot of them saying also get involved, PTA, things like that. Marshall, what do you think? 
Uh, parents definitely need to get involved and everyone needs to take responsibility, but we also got to remember parents want their kids to have a better life. A lot of time the schools need to do a better job of bringing the parents back into the school, particularly our low-performance schools that just have not done it for a long time. Marsha, you might have said as we close things off, schools need to do a better job. How frustrating it seems we spend so much on schools and educating our kids, yet to me the results are not a passing grade all the time. Why? Again, a lot of folks asking why. Good job by you three guys. Great text coming in from everybody out there. Lots of concern tonight. Christine, to you. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for uh, writing in and letting us know what you think about education. That is it for us right now. We're out of time. I want to thank our guests for being with us, Dr. Delling, Marshall Tuck, and Ben Austin. Thank you so much. As I pointed out at the beginning, you are, are the ones out there in the trenches fighting the hard fight. We thank you for your time and also remind you that Fox 11 is committed to covering education. Thanks for being with us. Going out to Channel 13.